Monique Clark, is claiming her stake in the world of fashion. As the CEO and co-founder of Monique C, a clothing line for plus-size women, she spearheads the creative direction and strategy of her quickly growing venture. Firmly rooted in prayer, balance, and confidence, Clark shares how she built her business and her game plan for fostering the company's growth. Find out why she's the boss. So, first things first, boss mm -hmm. lady, before we dive into this business. Oh boy, this sounds serious. We got to do a shoe game check. <laughs> yes. Must know what you are wearing. These are uh, black and white zebra print Manolos. And I actually got them because a customer of mine used to work for Manolo Blahnik. And it was funny, one day we were in the office and the phone rang and Manolo Blahnik came up on a caller ID and everybody was like, excuse? <laughs> <laughs> Found out it was a customer that worked there and she's now actually a stylist. And so she invited me to the sample sale and I said, you don't have to ask twice. Very nice. Yeah. That's a customer I would love. Yes. <laughs> love, love, love. And those are fierce Thank shoes. Thank you. Thank appropriately you. paired with Monique C. Thank you. So the story goes that a trip to Europe back in 2004 is what prompted mm -hmm. you to start Monique C. Yes. Is that where the vision all began? Yeah, it, it was really something that was serendipitous. I, a lot of people may not know, but I actually didn't go to fashion school. I have a degree in math and computer science. And I had worked in nonprofit and corporate America, et cetera, et cetera. And I took some time off. I just, I wasn't satisfied. And I went to Europe. My cousin used to have a clothing business in, in London. And she took me to one of her old factories. And I just walked in there and I was like, if somebody was doing stuff like this for plus size, they would do really well. And she said, you should try. And you know, she put the bug in my ear. My cousin Trisha, I always thank her. And my mother was like, go for it. And a year later, we have the collection. That's amazing. Yeah. I mean, and on that note, talk about how you were able to make that transition from the corporate world, if you will, nonprofit, mm -hmm. business, into fashion design. Well, it actually works pretty well because I always tell people, any business you are, whether it's music, fashion, anything, it's 90% business and 10% fashion. How to get your name out there, how to do your finances. If you don't know how to, what a balance sheet is, it doesn't matter how great you are, you'll, you'll go out of business. And even in the design, like, because I was a math major, like, I understand lines and shapes and proportions, and it, I feel like I've been prepared for this my entire life, and I, was, I didn't know I was being prepared for it. Skinny chicks everywhere <laughs> are feeding for meat on their bones so they can fit into a movie. <laughs> I got, a tweet, I got a tweet about that one time. A girl said, I wish I could gain some weight so I could wear more See, things. I told you, exactly. <laughs> yeah. What is it about this line that stands above and beyond the others? We did something that was different from what everybody expects plus size clothing to be. I mean, behind you is a gold swimsuit and people are probably like, for plus size? But yeah, it looks fantastic. So I hear you talking about what the curvy girl does not want. Yeah. What does she want? She wants everything that you want. I mean, I'm here looking at your dress, and I'm like, I, I love this. This would be great for my spring collection for next year. She wants style. She wants color. She wants, you know, form-fitting clothing. She doesn't want clothes cut in a box. That, that's not attractive. It's, it's, there's no difference from what my sister, who's a size 6, and me as a size 18, would want to wear. I heard you mention your mother several times. Mm -hmm. I know you founded the company with her. Yeah. She was the, the, the behind the scenes, I was the front of house, and it, it really just worked. And she instilled a lot of great processes. We still have them to this day, even though she's not here with us anymore. I know you said it's, it sort of was a struggle at first, mm -hmm. you know, making that transition into this world of fashion. A lot of people were sort of, no, that's not what the curvy girl wants. Right. When did you have that aha moment or sort of what I like to call it, in your face moment? Because <laughs> you're like, no, this is it. I guess I had that from the beginning. Mm -hmm. I mean, I always kind of felt like they were wrong. You know, I, it, I, there's no other way to explain it other than, you know, I always knew they were wrong. And then, of course, you know, when you start seeing people wearing your clothes or you see it in a magazine, et cetera, et cetera, you just say, okay, obviously this is something. You can't tell me it's not. I worked Monique C morning, noon, and night, and I still do. And on that note, talk about the sacrifice for yourself as a businesswoman, mm. as the boss, the mm -hmm. sacrifices that you have to make so that your company can grow. 
Yeah, I mean, I remember my best friend Aisha said to me one time, she said, you work now so you can chill later. My friends would call me and say, can we even just have a coffee? And I, and I would be like, no, I'm, I can't. So I hired some staff. It was At first it was just myself and one person, and now we've got um, a team of four. And it just knowing that I have to trust my team and that I have to delegate and I have to say, I don't have to do everything. So I can ask this person to do this, that person to do this. I wake up really early in the morning. I'm up by about 5.30 every morning. I do my Bible lesson. I start my day with a clear head. How are you able to maintain that balance between your professional life and your personal I life? I don't know. You don't know? <laughs> okay. Yeah, I, you know, I don't have any kids yet. I, you know, I want to be a mom one day and everything, but just the idea that it, I'm able to kind of run the hours that I do because I don't have that year and I'm, yet and everything, but I do know that this is an opportunity for me to create a foundation for my kids, for my family going forward. So, you know, I just know that I have to work and I have to do it. I think when you have a clear focus about what you want to get done in a day, it allows you to balance everything. So. In talking to you, there's a lot of advice I hear mm -hmm. coming from you. What three pieces of advice would you offer to women looking to start their own business? I would say go for your passion. You have to figure out what your passion is. I, I see far too many people who want to start businesses, but they're starting businesses and things that are already being done. Everybody was put here for a passion, a purpose, and a plan. So figure out what yours is. And if you know what that is, you'll be successful. I would say that's tip number one. Okay. Number two, figure out who your sheroes are and, you know, do what you can to follow them and hopefully one day you can meet them. My mentor is Lisa Price from Carol's Daughter. I actually just had um, a meeting with her yesterday and she and I meet once a month and we talk and she, every, I mean, I like, I, I drink from her. I'm just like, <laughs> give me knowledge, you know? I say try to find somebody who gives you that. And then I guess three, I say go for it. You know, and, and I always tell people when you start a business, don't do it half. You know what I want to say, half. Yeah. Right. Don't don't do it like that. I think one of the things that helped me was that I went full throttle with Monique C so it had to work because I had bills I had to pay and I didn't have a backup. And I think sometimes when you don't have a backup, that's the best way to go in because you know you have to make it work regardless. So I would say that's my, those are my three pieces of advice. Very good piece of advice. Thank you. Now before I let you go, I'm curious to know what inspires you? How are you able to come out with a new collection every season? I'm inspired by my customers. I mean, you know, we have our store in New York City. Women come in here on a daily basis and they, my customers will tell you what they want. Girl, I hope you have a such and such jumpsuit for spring. <laughs> I hope you have a cover up for my swimsuit. I hope you have this, I hope you have that. So I get a lot of amazing feedback from my customers. I love to travel. I went to Tanzania this June. I was in Barbados in July. Like I just, like I see culture, I see people, I see, you know, when you go to different countries, you see women that look every shape and size and there's just a spirit of acceptance and I love that. And so I bring that into my design. Perfect. Yeah. Is there anything else you'd like to add about Monique C and just simply being the boss? I just want all the girls who are watching that if you're an aspiring entrepreneur, you have an idea, you know, I always say if you really want to do it, you'll do it. You won't make excuses. So go for it. Follow your dreams. Be good to yourself. That's number one. That's good. Thank yeah. you so much. Thank you. And thank you guys for watching this episode of She's the Boss. If you like this one, then you'll love the others on MadamNewar.com. And be sure to follow us on Twitter at MadamNewar and like us on Facebook.